Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Multi Towers, Black Adder, Only Fools and Horses. Yes, Prime Minister. Etc. Uh, I, let's see. Okay. Original link to the video, top of the description below. Right below that, link to the Discord. Would love to have you. Let's go. Let's go. Yep. Well known for creating... Okay, preemptive light. Britain is well known for creating great television, and much of it is exported worldwide, from Monty Python to Doctor Who to all of those majestic nature documentaries by David Attenborough. But there are plenty of shows that are on all the time in the UK that never make it across the pond, and I think that you should know about them. I'm Siobhan Thompson, and this is Anglophenia, and here are just 10 of the many programs that Brits regularly reference in daily conversation. Not Anglophilia. You know, the equivalent of Saturday Night Live, Jeopardy, or I guess the Brady Bunch. Yes, that is a program with an extra the Brady M and an Bunch. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. Thank right. you very much. Blue okay, Peter. I'll stop. The mission statement of the BBC is educate, inform, entertain. And this children's program does just that. It's a magazine-style show that covers every topic that a kid could be interested in, from kayaking to chemistry. It's been running since 1958, and it's most famous for its garden, the Blue Peter badges that you could win by writing in, and for making really, really cool things out of yogurt pots and toilet rolls. It's basically if you took the world's coolest scout troop and put them on television. And what exactly is a Blue Peter anyway? Well, it's a maritime signal indicating that a vessel is about to begin a journey. I looked that up. Fun fact. Didn't Dad's know that. Army. This was a sitcom made in the 60s and 70s about the home guard in a small town during... Ooh, 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 ooh. I have to, I just want to remember that. Okay, sorry. During World War II, these lovable old codgers were the last line of defense against the Nazis. It definitely plays into an ideal of the great British stiff upper lip, but it's still on all the time because it's really, really funny. If you ever need a lesson in the subtleties of social class interaction in the UK, you should watch this show because somehow we managed to even make beating the Nazis about where you went to school. Notable quotes include, you stupid boy, and they don't like it up em. And for all of you asking at home, this is what the theme tune sounds like. Who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Hitler, when you think old England's gone? Bada -bum -bum -bum. Coronation Street. There are many soap operas in the UK. EastEnders, Emmerdale, Casualty, and so on. But the longest running of them all is Coronation Street. Set in Never a pretty northern town, Corrie has been on the telly since 1960, and it follows a trials and tribulations of hardworking folk who are just trying to make an honest living and then go down the rover's return for a pint. Also, a lot of it takes place in a factory that makes women's undies, but it's not as raunchy as that sounds. Richard and Judy. This married couple were the king and queen of daytime TV in the UK for over 20 years. They hosted This Morning from 1988 to 2001 and then an afternoon Bill. talk show called Richard and Judy from 2001 to 2009. Think Regis and Kathy Lee meets Oprah. Charlotte Church was discovered by calling into Richard and Judy and singing to them when she was just 11 years old because they love talented showbiz kids. So I guess Regis and Kathy Lee meets Oprah meets Ellen? Look, there are a limited amount of channels in the UK, so talk shows are in short supply, all right. Their shows are definitely on the low brow end of the spectrum. Typical conversation might go something like, have you heard of birds? Birds? What are birds? I well, I've never heard of such a thing. The Great British oh, Bake Off. Oh, this show is so embarrassingly British, it makes me squirm. It's an amateur baking competition. It takes place in a tent behind a mansion house, and it is by far the most talked about show on TV when it's on. Think of a small town cake baking competition, or what would happen if Zoe Deschanel hosted MasterChef. Also, one of the judges is called Mary Berry. No, really. And she's terrifying. Ah! 
Snooker. This highly competitive form of pool is regularly aired on British TV. It goes on for hours and it's really, pool. really boring. Also, the players wear these funny suits with these velvet waistcoats. I don't know. Despite this, it remains bafflingly popular and is regularly shown on primetime TV. My overwhelming memory of the snooker as a child was that it would replace The Simpsons on BBC Two because whoever is making the scheduling decisions hated fun. The commentary is also fantastically monotonous. Oh, Robinson's placed the white ball. Oh, yes, that's a nice break. To be honest, I, I was watching The Simpsons this morning. It was just on TV. And it was good, you know? It, they went to, like, a religious cult, and it was funny. But I, I really... It, it, that would... Honestly, that... You know what? That was the most Simpsons I had ever watched in one sitting. And I probably watched eight minutes of it. Um, I sort of feel like I should, I should watch it just to, because it's such an influential show. But I was a big South Park person. You know, I, I love South Park. I still love South Park to this day. They're not nearly as good as they used to be, but yeah, I gotta check out some more Simpsons in my off time. That's exactly what it needed to do. Just for hours. Top of the pops. This was Britain's answer to American Bandstand. All the chart topping hits lip synced to perfection by your favorite stars. It first aired in 1963, much to the excitement of the youths of the day. It in 2006, but Top of the Pops 2, which shows episodes from yesteryear, is still hugely popular. My personal favorite thing about this show is watching the teenage audience try to look cool and dance like regular human beings while staring at their favorite pop singers. University Stop Challenge. It. This is the best show on television, a fiendishly difficult general knowledge competition where teams of students representing their university My compete kind of show. to win a very shiny trophy and the respect of their peers. The structure is very simple. There's a starter question worth 10 points that they answer individually, and if they get that question right, there's a further three questions worth five points each that they answer as a team. So if you've ever heard anybody say your starter for 10, or you've seen the movie of that same name starring James McAvoy, Boy. Well, that's a reference to this show. It's hosted by fearsome journalist Jeremy Paxman, who's just like that really strict teacher that you were always disappointing in school. It was like, come on, Warren. Kid. That was obviously Jeffrey. much ado about nothing, honestly. <sighs> Time Team. This is the second best show on television. A Sunday evening staple, Time Team follows a team of archaeologists Aldrich. over three days as they excavate a historical site. So it's kind of like those home makeover shows, but in reverse. I have a degree in archaeology mostly because of this show. It's hosted by Tony Robinson, who played Baldrick in Blackadder, because obviously if you're an actor in a historical sitcom, you know a lot about it in real life, right? I don't know, there's some kind of logic there. He isn't doing it as the Baldrick character, though. He's not just standing over oh, a trench wish. going, there's a wall, but not a roof, so how can you prove there's a house? Spring watch. Yes, we Brits say? are okay, obsessed no. with the weather, so much so that we dedicate hours of programming to it each year. Spring watch follows a group of very hearty, outdoorsy type presenters as they wait patiently for daffodils to bloom or lambs to be birthed. It's by far the most dad-friendly show on TV. It's mostly people standing in a field and saying things like, well, we've been waiting here for eight hours and the sheep don't look any closer to birthing yet. Now let's go over to our camera in the badger set. Hey, hey. There's also an autumn watch and a winter Those flowers. watch, although no summer. Those are around here, too. In the Badger set. There's also an autumn watch and a winter watch, although no summer watch because we don't have summers in Britain. Do you have a favorite British program that never made it stateside? Let us know in the comments and don't forget... The Office, it did make it stateside. Blackadder. Yes, Prime Minister. ...to like and subscribe. You love Great. these videos. Just watch another one. Go on. Okay. I will. It is a great channel. Coolio. Cool. Coolio. I uh, love y'all. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, very interesting. Can't wait to see your comments and recommendations. Love to see you on the Discord if that's your thing. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.